boy, Mexico will make you, will F you up. Uh, I'm I'm trying to work on my foul mouth. But Mexico will, man, I'm going to tell you something. Mexico will drive you crazy. It's going to have you you getting the hell up out of, getting the heck up out of this place. I was going to teach you some patience. I've shared a lot of stuff um, about some of the cultural norms and just the way folks do stuff. So I got a handful of things that, man, whew, I just got to warn you. I got to warn you about this, particularly those of y'all. Hopefully I don't forget. I need to write this stuff down. Um, if any of y'all have any health conditions because <laughs> we're dealing with some stuff right now. So story that just happened today. So I, I'm, I, I found somebody who can come by and clean up this apartment. You get what I'm saying? Um, They said they wanted to come by on Sunday. They said 6 o'clock. And then that was yesterday. So agreed. And then later on the day, they sent me a message. I'll be there at 6.15. We agreed to 6.15. They're going to be here at 6.15. Send them the address. Blah, blah, blah. I told them I'm going to get there a little early. I'm going to run by the store, get, make sure I got all the supplies that's needed. And so, man, so I get here like at 6.07. I ran to the store, got all the stuff. And then at 6.12, this joker sent a message. Method basically saying, I had to translate it. Method like, hey, today is Sunday. The taxis and the trucks, I don't know what you're talking about, trucks. Taxis and the trucks are scarce, so it's going to be a whole lot more expensive. Um, So I'm wondering if I can come by tomorrow. Now, I'm like, I done ran to the store, rushing at the last minute, drove 30 minutes to get over here, and then you're going to call me at 612. You haven't even left yet, had no plans of leaving yet. And at six twelve, when you supposed to be here at six fifteen, you calling me talking about, can we do tomorrow? Can we come? Can I come in the morning? Hell no, we ain't coming up in this mother. Hell, heck no, we ain't coming up in this camp at, in, in the morning. You know, already screwed me over and gave me the shaft uh, t- tonight. No, we ain't coming over. Now, I had to, that one right there. I almost lost it, man, because. <laughs> I'm a patient guy, and I and I just knew this was gonna work out. Ironically, somebody posted under my post when I posted for this job. Somebody else came in the comments and said, "Dude, don't mess with this. I've been waiting on folks to come by my house since Thursday. Joker's promising to show up to clean up. They never show up. They don't call. Some of them call at the last minute and say they ain't coming." And they just go ghost on you. And he, she said it was like five of them that them got, gave her the shaft. So they was like, don't even. So I had already, I hid their comments. I was like, man, I don't need this negativity in my life. Now I get it. You know what I mean? So two other folks, same thing, man. Made promises to, I, put, I posted it up again. Um, I, I just give up. <laughs> I said, all right, I'm going to try again tomorrow. To get this thing done. So, it's crazy, man. So, that's just, I asked, I talked to another local. I was like, man, what is it? I know in the States, you just got some lazy jokers who just don't want to work. And, and I don't know if that's the case here, but ain't looking good, man. Ain't looking good. And it's not even an issue of not wanting to come. You do all of this communicating. It's the thing. They do all of this communicating to get the job. Answering questions, following up real quick, and then boom, they just all of a sudden they they set the time and everything is great, and then boom, nothing. You know what I mean? So it, 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 the Joker followed back up and confirmed the time, pushed it back fifteen minutes, and then gonna wait to six twelve. So now, again, part of culture here. I'm gonna give you another story. I posted this online in the in one of these Facebook groups and got crucified for it. Um, so I might get some backlash on this. Still, really don't understand what the backlash was about, but somebody gonna correct me more than likely on this. So here's what happened: me and the girls went to this restaurant. 
I'll leave the name of the restaurant off just out of courtesy. Went to this restaurant. It was like had one of them live bands that play outside and and whatnot. Go to the restaurant. Really didn't even sit down because we sat upstairs on the upper level. So as soon as they put us took us to our seats, we just walked right over there to the rail and looked off the rail to look at the performance. You know, because they was already singing and, and and whatnot. And so we just we didn't even really sit down. So the guy came back, took our drinks. I ordered uh, the kid. I forgot what the kid ordered, but I ordered me uh, a Coke and rum. So we still standing over the thing. He come back with our drink, so we go sit down, and as he set the drink down on the table, and immediately after he set the drink down on the table, I already knew what I wanted. I wanted some chicken wings. So he was. He started to explain uh, how the flavors work, basically saying something like. You can get three flavors if you order these many wings or something to that effect. So he sat the drink down on the table, not even 30 seconds later. So nobody touched the drink. Nobody drank the drink. He sat the drinks on the table, and, and within 30 seconds of sitting the drink on the table, he leaned on the table to explain um, the options we had for chicken wings. And once he leaned on the table, the table was rocky. You know how them tables be uneven. So as he leaned on the table, the table Flipped the drink over, and the glass splashed all on me, got on my clothes. The glass fell on the ground and cracked and broke and all of that. He's apologizing, is apologetic, saying he's sorry, he didn't mean to do that. You know, my bad, my bad, blah, 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 blah. Then this joker proceeded to tell me, you know, wanted to ask me if I wanted another one. And I was like, yeah, I want another one. Of course I want another one. Then he told me I had to pay for 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 the one that broke and I'm like dude I ain't break it you broke it and he was like yeah I know but if you want another one you're gonna be paying for two of them you know so if you don't get another one you paying for this one I'm like no dude no 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 <laughs> it ain't how they work I didn't get this drink you broke it you know what I mean, and, and you know what I just have this idea that, you know, this is a this is a big this is a business. If the tables is wobbly, it's, it's your business responsibility to fix that damn table, not mine. So some of these folks in these Facebook groups were eating me up, telling me it was my job to fix the fix this, the wobbly table, and more or less leading along to the alluding to the fact that since I knew the table was wobbly, I, I was my responsibility to put some up underneath it. I'm like, I don't, I ain't know that table was wobbly. We didn't even really sit down. So they said us, took us to the table and say where we were sitting. We didn't even sit. We walked right to the rail to look overboard to see what was going on. You know, taking pictures and making little video clips and all that. So again, it really didn't make any sense. Why? But anyhow, so. We're going back and forth, and you know, my daughter, she's her Spanish is about 70%. Uh, she understands that can communicate probably at about 70% fluency. So she's, she's repeating to me what he's saying, and I'm already catching much of what he's saying. But even she was like, I think he said you have to pay for this and pay for the next one if you want another one, and that if you didn't want a second one, you were still responsible for the first one. And, I'm, and she was like, but maybe I'm wrong because she said, but that can't be right. So I'm probably wrong. I'm like, no, you probably ain't wrong, but that's what I'm hearing. And so when we first came to the restaurant, one of the guests started speaking English to us. He just assumed we spoke English. And so he started speaking English to us when we first came in. So it wasn't an issue of us not being able to communicate in Spanish. When we came in, he just started, hey, welcome. Is this your first time here? And was like, yeah, it is. And he's like, you're going to love it here. You're going to have a great experience here. Uh, we're going to show you a great time, blah, 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 blah. So instead of going back and forth with the guy in Spanish upstairs, I go, I go, we go grab the guy, get the guy who it, who greeted us at the door, like, okay, he speaks English. Let's let's have a conversation with him. Maybe he can communicate and explain what's going on. So he didn't come up, and so they, they the two of them conversed back and forth. He didn't come up. Oh, just heard something upstairs. He didn't come up. 
So the guy come back upstairs and start to explain to me, well, okay, we chit chatted. All right, we're not gonna let you. Ch we're not gonna charge you for this one this time. But if it happens again, you you're responsible. And I'm like, no, nah, I need you to help me understand how this was my fault the first time. And if it happens again, I'm like, but nothing ever happened. You happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, of course, on the Facebook forum, folks were eating me up, talking about how, how dare I talk to the guy like that. And my arrogance, it was just appalling. And my, and my, my privilege was just in check and that I give Americans a bad name and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what are these, are these folks on crack? You know what I mean? Some of these folks, say, why well, I say leave them expats alone, y'all. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, are these folks on crack or what? You know, and then they're telling me, well, you're an American. You can afford to pay for the drink. Then, you know, you pay for the drink. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. But I didn't, I didn't get the drink. You know what I mean? And so and the other folks is like, you know, and then our other folks were saying the opposite. They were like, well, just because you're an American and just because you think Americans got all this money doesn't mean you should be paying for something that you didn't get, especially when it was their fault. You know what I mean? And so, but somebody gave an explanation about possibly what would have happened or, or what was going on, which for me, if I had played this scenario out of my head or understood that this was a possibility, then things might have been different. You know, so somebody made the comment that oftentimes these restaurants here, whenever an employee breaks something or in this case drop food or drop a drink or spill a drink, they take it out the pay, the, out of the employee's paycheck and make the paycheck, you know, make the employee pay for it. Which obviously ain't 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 right ain't the right thing to do but who am i to come in here and tell folks how to run their business and so i don't even know if that's the from my understanding that's a pretty common thing um whether it's a good practice or a bad practice i don't know how they floated here i don't even really try and get into all of that but if i would have known that that was probably the likely scenario um, or if he could, if he had explained it to me, like, man, they gonna take this out of my check. I basically gonna be working the whole night for free if I had to pay for this drink. You know, cause a lot of these folks, young folks out here, they, they, they making only $10, $10, $12 or $15 a day. And so now you have this $5 drink coming out of his check. That's half his paycheck. You know what I mean? So I'm, I could be empathetic with that. I could be a little bit more understanding. It's like, you know what? I'll, I'll suck it up. Guy doing a good job, trying to do his best. I ain't going to have him hit his pocket up that hard. Because, see, once you know, you know. But I didn't know. And so when I went to the Facebook group, the, 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 you know, to ask about it, and, you know, these jokers are eating me up alive about the comment, you know, I was like, these jokers here. You know what I mean? So, of course, folks is going back and forth, um, telling me I need to go back to where I came from, go back to America, go to a European country, um, you know, because they do things better there, and, and that perhaps Mexico ain't for me. <laughs> I was like, these, these jokers is crazy. You know what I mean? And I'm saying, now, I've been here two years, practically, um, and obviously... I'm still learning my Spanish. So other course, other folks were like, well, if you knew Spanish, then you wouldn't have had this problem. You'd be able to better communicate, blah, 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 blah. How dare you want to go talk to the guy downstairs who speaks English? Joker spoke to me first in English. I didn't say anything. Soon as we walked up, he started talking in English. You know what I mean? So folks had these preconceived ideas and notions about what should been, should have happened and all of that. I'm like, man, I don't owe y'all no, I don't owe y'all no damn explanation. Number one, you know what I mean. But they will have, but the mindset, you need to go back to where you came from. You make Americans look bad when when you don't want to pay for the drink. I didn't get it. Listen, I don't care if the drink 
called Ten Cent. If the drink called Ten Cent, and I bought a Ten Cent drink, I expect to have a Ten Cent drink. Now I might not like the way it tastes, and then I'm still obligated to pay. But let me get my drink for Ten Cent. Let me get what I paid for. Don't 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 you go tear it up and knock it down on the floor, and then tell me I'm responsible for paying for it after you acknowledge that you knocked it down and apologize profusely about knocking it down. You know what I mean? So that's where I had a problem at. A lot of stuff sometimes, you know, it's not even about the money. Stand on principle. You know, but at the same token, again, this is one of the reasons why I was asking the question, what is the norm? Is this the norm here so that I can know? Now that I know that, it's a good possibility that the employee check going to have to, pay, to be docked for that, and I know how little they earn, I'm more inclined to absorb the cost myself. It's the cost of living in Mexico. But see, the thing that bothers me most is that sometimes when we complain or have a gripe about something, wasn't well, complaining about how they should change their norms, for simply asking is it normal to be paying for a drink that they break or spill or they drop your plate of food on the way to the table, or are you really responsible for that? Um, so that's essentially what I was doing, getting clarification. And so when these people make these comments like, well, this is a different country, and then they even go in with the third world word. word. It's a third world country. Things are cheap here. And because it's, it's three, four, three or four times cheaper here, you should just pay for it. No, they, no you shouldn't just pay for it. You know what I mean? You, you go into an establishment, you go into a business, um, and you're paying for services, and you should get those services. But the problem with that is it makes them – when, when when foreigners say stuff like that, oh, they doing the best they can, they don't know any better. When, when they make comments like that, it makes it seem like the folks are incompetent, that they can't do better, that they shouldn't, you, you know what I mean? And that, to me, would be more insulting uh, to the locals more than anything. Oh, they doing the best they can with what they got. You know, everybody can do better. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can improve, but when you start letting it go, oh, you should just pay for it. No. You know what I mean? And again, I don't know what the labor practices are out here, the labor rules and all of that. And again, I don't, don't even try and get into all of that. But anyhow, story is, so went back and forth, so I'm trying to get him to explain to me how is it my fault the first time and how are you doing me a favor? <laughs> by letting it go this time, but you're going to get me the next time when I, I didn't do nothing the first time. So I was asking for clarification on that, but of course other folks were saying, there you go with your entitled attitude. They they will try, They made it right, and then you want to go back and forth. No, I wasn't trying to go back and forth. I, principal, I wanted to know how was it my fault and how was it that you were doing me a favor by letting it slide this time but we're going to get me next time it's the way they said it you know what i mean so so that was the other thing man little so some of this nonsense you're going to deal with some nonsense when you get out here and so i will preface this by saying understanding the language and knowing the language is going to help carry you a long way and get you out of some of these jams when you run into them. Now, fortunately, this hasn't been a common issue, a common jam, per se. Um, this is the first time I had to deal with anything like this. And with my limited Spanish, I've been able to get around quite well. I've been here two years. My Spanish is significantly better than it was two years ago. I'm still a ways off, a long way off from fluency of any sort. But I understand a whole lot more I can communicate my way around and get around as necessary and do realize things could be a lot better and the experience even more enhanced by knowing the language. So some of the times, some of the questions that folks were asking, well, you've been here for two years and why haven't you, haven't you, you should know how to talk Spanish by now. So, you know, and again, not making excuses, not that I owe anybody any explanations or anything like that, but... You know, as, as many of you all know, we've had three major medical emergencies since we've been here. Um, and, and, and quite honestly, man, with, the, with our children here, 
in these medical emergencies, just really didn't have the time to be able to do a deep dive into Spanish. You know what I mean? Now, a lot of these folk doing all this trash talking of full blown adults here with no children. They here by themselves or just here with themselves and their spouse and don't have nearly as many responsibilities. So they have nothing but time. Many of them are retired, um, living on their pension, and many of us still have to work 40 hours, 60 hour weeks, and then take care of children, their schoolwork, their medical emergencies, and then try and find time to learn Spanish. So our first two years here, we've been quite busy. Now, as I make move, as I move forward to the latter half of this year, 2023, my goal is to to get a little bit more deep dive into Spanish. Um, the kids, my daughter's health, with schizophrenia is starting to stabilize, getting a lot better. So that's going to give me a lot more time to uh, focus because I really do want to learn this language. Every day I, I want to learn, I want to go deeper. And if you haven't learned Spanish, this is a good time to start learning this before you get here. I posted some resources on the website in our members only section. Um, a lady named Marisol, who's, who's Mexican, she teaches Spanish on Zoom. I suggest y'all start taking these lessons early before you even get here. Folks have already signed up with her and they talking about Cartes, I'm learning Spanish, that's the best thing you could have said. Um, I'm six months out before moving to Mexico. I'm a year out from moving to Mexico and folks are already taking the time to learn this Spanish. You know what I mean? If you haven't become, if you haven't subscribed to our membership um, at Move Abroad and Thrive, I'd encourage you to do so. We got a lot of resources on the inside of the site, recommendations, who to learn Spanish from, from local Mexicans and whatnot that teach online via Zoom. There's some Mexican Spanish schools, uh, Spanish schools here locally in Medina that you can join and do full immersion and all of that. So if you hadn't done that, moveabroadandthrive.com, check that out. Um, become a member and get, get access to that information because folks are loving it. They're spending 30 minutes a week or an hour a week taking classes because it's going to make a difference. It's going to help. Um, other thing that we're dealing with right now, I'm just trying to share some stuff that folks that you just genuinely don't hear folks talk about. Um, my daughter's medicine. You know, my, the, the, the daughter is dealing with schizophrenia. So they have her on a medicine uh, and they're weaning her off of another medicine. Now, everything been going good. I've been stocking up on her medicine just to have her back up. And you know what I mean? And the backups started running low. Found out that Something happened, and I still don't know what happened. One of the larger labs that manufacture her medicine got shut down or was closed down or was ordered down. Some folks say it was political in nature. Other folks talked about it with health and safety issues with the medicines being manufactured. I don't know. All I know is they stopped making the medicine. And so... So pharmacies have been completely out of her medicine. Can't find them nowhere in Mexico. Nationwide in Mexico, her medicine don't exist. It's all out. I, I spent two weeks driving around going to pharmacy after pharmacy after pharmacy just hoping I can find a box. And the month before, I happened to run around and I did find one box if I was able to get a little more. But... I, 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 we started running out, got down to a very, very low supply, didn't know what we were going to do. I was like, we want to hop on a plane, fly somewhere, go get some medicine. Started digging around into Columbia. They didn't have the medicine there. I did find one or two places that had medicine, but they only had like an inventory of seven left. And they were like, well, by the time you get here, it's going to be gone. And Columbia is no longer producing the medicine. Same thing with Costa Rica, Ecuador, some of these other places of like you can't even go to the pharmacy to get this medicine. The doctor has to give it to you himself personally. It's all like, wow. So there's a support group that I'm a member of uh, for, for parents uh, with loved ones with, with schizophrenia. I kind of went out and made my plea 
about, hey, what can I do? What do I need to put her on? Um, what can I, because the medicine is working well and I, I just can't afford to be going backwards. So together as a community, they kind of chipped in and worked it out where somebody was able to kind of give me a small supply to hold me over for a couple of months. And a local friend here connected me with another friend who had an airplane. And the medicine was sent to him. He was already in the States. He flies back and forth from Manila to Mexico on a regular basis. And he picked up my medicine and brought it back and brought it to me. Uh, met up with him the other night, Saturday night in Centro. And he handed me off the medicine. This man had his own plane. You know what I mean? So it worked out. So I got about a good 60, 70 days to find a source or hope that in the next 60 days, this lab start, re start producing this medicine again. Um, it's a controversial medicine, very regulated, even in the States. It's not like I can just go to the States and get it. In order to get this medicine in the States, they have to be doing blood work once a week to even get the medicine. If you don't do the blood work, if you miss a week, you don't get the medicine. If they log into the system and the system is down, they can't verify that you had lab work, you don't get the medicine. You know what I mean? So, um, so it wasn't as simple as just going back to the States. And plus this medicine, um, again, it's, it's a very controversial medicine, but it, it's considered one of the most highly effective medicines for folks with schizophrenia, but it has a lot of side effects. But there's a particular protocol that we follow uh, with a particular doctor called the Laitman Protocol, Dr. Laitman Protocol. Um, it, it had worked wonders. It is working wonders for us. His protocol tries to preempt whatever the side effects, the common side effects are by giving an, an alternate type of medication to, to prevent the, the, the side effect from occurring in the first place. So pretty much taking preemptive action um, against something that's known to cause an issue. And so far it's been working wonders. Um, the kids will go back kids are able to live a normal life, go back to work, get their lives back, all of that. So it's been very, it's, it's been, so anyhow, so I got about two months to sort this out um, or at least find another supplier where I can get it from. And I don't mind hopping on a plane, going somewhere, buying six months worth of medicines and then coming back and then have to go back six months later. But I need to find a place. So... Um, so that's what we're dealing with right now. Um, you know, I'm hoping some words suggest that they're going to start manufacturing this thing again. And then at that go down, I'm going to stock up and have about six months supply on hand at any given time. Won't catch me slipping like that again. So now the, the medicine is not just medicines for, you know, for, for mental health. Folks, the same lab produce medicines for high blood pressure, medicines for diabetes, medicines for the, the medicines that anesthesiologists need to take people under, put them to sleep during surgery. They produce that kind of medicine. So I read an article the other day. There were people out in Mexico City, I believe, protesting in the streets. The government talking about what's going on. We need, we need this. This stuff need to get back online so we get our medicine. I don't understand a place that would shut down a, and I, and again, I don't understand why there's only one lab manufacturing the medicine. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd think there'd be a couple of labs manufacturing the medicine, but why would you want a bunch of schizophrenia, schizophrenics running around without their medicine. You know what I mean? I mean, that right there should make folk think straight. Like, okay, folk need their stuff. Same with diabetics. Why would you want these millions of folks here with diabetes not to have their diabetic men running around here and pass out in coma? Jokers with high blood pressure. Why wouldn't you want them to have their medicine? You gotta be running around here and have heart attacks and strokes up in this bad boy. Gonna cost you more money with providing the government resources for health care and all of that. Why? 
See what I mean? The logic just makes no sense. And while I may not understand some of the other stuff, this is really one I just don't get. <clears throat> one of her other drugs, medicine that they're weaning her off of is also running on low. Fortunately, I got quite a bit of that. But the fact that they running low is ridiculous. You know what I mean? It just... It just don't make no sense. Um, you know, so my point in saying that is if if you come into Mexico, call the pharmacies, reach out, find out if they got your medicine. If they don't have your medicine, find out what some alternatives are so you can have as a backup. If they do got your medicine, stock up on your medicines. Bring your extra medicines. Now, again, this was just one lab. I don't know all the medicines they make. Um, and I don't know how many other labs produce other medicines or if there's multiple labs producing the same medicines of the other types. I don't know. I don't know if this is a common thing. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. Looking to it. Um, but I do know I had a hard time going to Colombia, getting it. Um, Ecuador, Costa Rica. Was even looking at going to Panama to pick it up. Uh, and there was one other country. Um, you know, so get back up. Have a backup. Stock up of your medicine just in case. And so these are just little nuances you got to factor in. Now, I don't know if this is just Mexico. I, it, it may be the same in other countries. I, but I will promise you this. There are going to be some nuances no matter where you go, even in the more established, um, more first world infrastructure company, uh, countries, they're going to have their issues. So there, there's nobody that's perfect. They're going to they're gonna be issues no matter where you go. You just have to be prepared for it and ready to work around it if it becomes an issue. And when you know what the issues are. So now I know medicines can be an issue. So... That's something that I'll work on to keep an in a significant amount of inventory on hand um, to prevent any issues moving forward. And by the time I get down to, you know, like I said, I got about two and a half months supply. Once I get down to about a month and things ain't looking good, um, I might have to make some moves. You know what I'm saying? So. And again, unfortunately, this kind of medicine is not one I can just fly into the States and get and and just come back. Um, they only give it to you in 30 day supplies anyway. So cause that keeps you on board with the medicine, the, the, the lab work. So get regulated. Just another way of big pharma not wanting you to get this medicine. It's affordable. It, it works. And they don't want you to have your hands on this medicine. So... That's where we at. Just wanted to share, not so much as vet. Just wanted to share that with you all. Get your medicine in order. Check your feelings. You're going to deal with some nonsense no matter where you go. Try not to get frustrated. But today I was frustrated because I was rushing and trying to do all this stuff. And I was on a time schedule. They set the time up and they just messed me up. You know what I mean? Just mess me up. And so I get them days. It's not often like that. But these, again, these are some of the frustrations that a lot of people can't deal with. And it's nerve-wracking to them. The other issue that most folk deal with is that language. I can't stress that enough. A lot of folk leave here because they can't get this language. They feel like a kid. Feel like they can't order for themselves. They're a grown adult and they can't order food for themselves. Like they starting over. And folks leave for that reason. Keep in mind, there are English-speaking countries that you could go live in. You don't have to go live in a Spanish-speaking country if you don't want to learn how to talk Spanish. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to If your brain is too old, your mind is too old to try to learn a new language, don't even don't sweat it. Find a place that you can go to where English is spoken a lot. Like a lot of Asian countries like Thailand, Vietnam, 
English is spoken, Philippines, English is spoken a lot over there. You know what I mean? Well, it's, it's, it's widely spoken. Uh, so it's not necessarily that you just have to go to Europe or anything like that, but countries all over the world speak English, a lot more English uh, than many other places. So don't, don't lock yourself into a box. Just do your research. That's all it takes. You just got to put in the work to do the research. So, um, as I said earlier, if you haven't joined our platform, our membership, get exclusive content, access to content information, resources, stuff like that, we're going to be doing some interviews with an immigration attorney. She's going to be sharing some stuff. You'll be able to ask questions during the, during the, during the interview. Um, you know, so make sure you join moveabroadandthrive.com. Um, Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Pass this video around, share it, and thank y'all for watching. I'm out of here. Let's see if I can get somebody else. <laughs>